Hi, if you're watching this video, it's because you are a client of mine or you have been a client of mine in the past. And this is a reminder video. It's an education video, but it's there to remind you of not only what's important, but what do you need to do to keep putting yourself in a state consistently to feel the way you want to feel, to look the way you want to look, and to achieve what you want to achieve in your life. So all of my clients have different goals, different outcomes they want to achieve. Some of them are based on relationships, some of them are based on finances, some of them on health, on fitness, on well-being, whatever. But to put yourself in a state so that you can make your goals happen or you can achieve what you want to achieve, you have to put yourself in a state of certainty, confidence, clarity, conviction, and you need to be consistent in your actions. You cannot achieve something by taking action every now and again. You must take a, a consistent action. So when I say consistent action, I don't mean you have to fill up your day or fill up your diary every single day, but you must do something consistently. And the easiest way to manage your life and the outcomes you're getting is to manage yourself. You know that already, this is just a reminder. You would have read my 10 peak performance principles, and this is just to remind you, this is a checklist for your life. Right? It would be, I'd be a fool to think I could get by every single day being happy, positive, focused all the time. I, don't, I procrastinate, I get overwhelmed, I get stressed, but the difference is I don't stay there. I never choose to stay there. Why would I when I know what to do to get out of that state that is not serving me at all? And as a result, you know, I always talk about life being about contribution. If it's not serving me, it's not serving the people in my life. So this is a reminder of the 10 peak performance principles. Now, if you haven't heard me say before or share how I came up with these principles, or maybe you've just forgotten, I have studied peak performance and everything uh, that has to do with becoming the best version of ourselves for almost 15 years now. Psychology, sports psychology, fitness, nutrition, human behavior, communication, um, neuro-linguistic programming, blah, blah, blah. And I learned too many things. I say too many, it's a kind of joke but I was sharing too much. So when people started to ask me, how can you help me help myself? I thought, let me come up with 10 ways, 10 things that people can do consistently that they can make them a habit and a ritual in their life that if they did it every day, they would never have a problem and they could turn every challenge into a, or every problem into a solution and every, every problem into a challenge, into a personal challenge that they can overcome. It's all about perception and how you change this perception of who you are and the life that you're living is by, is by applying certain principles, applying certain beliefs, certain actions. And as a result of that, when you change the way you think, you change the way you feel. As a result of changing the way you feel, you change your actions, definitely. And as a result of the actions that you've taken based on how you're feeling and thinking, you will get very, very different results. So these are the 10 peak performance principles that I came up with that above anything else when it comes to energy, vitality and well-being, because it doesn't matter what your goals are, financial or business or anything, the one thing you need to achieve all of these goals is energy. With an abundance of energy, you can go out there and do anything and everything in the world as well as confidence. Limitless bulletproof confidence will allow you to achieve anything you want and to become the person you really want to be because that's who you really are. There's just fear holding you back. So you need to get out of fear and into fearless. Get out of living it by your limits and get into, get into living a limitless life. So here are the 10 peak performance principles. So the first one is to win your morning. Now, a reminder of what this means is to get up and start your day on your terms. Don't press snooze too many times. Don't wake up saying, oh God, it's morning. Say, oh, good morning, God, whether you're religious or not. Be grateful for the fact that you get to wake up another day. Some people, unfortunately, don't get to wake up. Someone didn't get to wake up today and they thought they would wake up. So be grateful for that. When you're, when you're sleeping as well, your body is dehydrating. So the very first thing you have to reach for is water, ideally a glass of lemon water. Make it too, but make sure you hydrate as soon as you wake up. So it's get up on time or get up when you say you're going to get up. Make sure you're obviously rested enough 
say thank you, be grateful for the fact that you have a newer day and you can set new intentions. Forget yesterday, what are you going to do today? Knowing that you've been given another chance, another opportunity. And then you're going to have your lemon water and then you must move your body. Sorry, I just dropped my pen there. You must move your body. You must connect your body and your mind. Otherwise, you're starting your day, you're trying to get your mind working, but it's disconnected from your body, and as a result, you just won't feel good. So whether it's jumping on a rebounder, trampoline, whether it's doing yoga, whether it's having a stretch, I have a wooden deck out there, it's a beautiful day today, and I just went and did some jumping with deep breathing to make sure that I connect my body and my mind and I win my morning. So that's how you win your morning, as well as having a healthy healthy, a lean protein and vegetable based uh, breakfast, whether it's a smoothie, using a blender or a smoothie or whatever. The second one is to have an attitude of gratitude. Now I'm not going to go into this too much. All I'm going to say is there is always someone worse off than you. So if you are starting your day complaining, you are choosing, I'm sorry to say, actually I'm not sorry to say this. Um, but you are choosing to feel this way because there's always someone worse off than you. You might be complaining about your relationship or your job or the life that you live, but I can tell you now that some people don't have a home. Some people don't even have employment and they've been trying for years to get a job and they're living on whatever, scraps a day. And some people don't have a relationship. Some people have never had a relationship. But whatever it is that you have, the fact that you're able to be a client of mine, that you have the means, whether it's financially or time-wise, the fact that you have a roof over your head, the fact that you have food in your stomach, the fact that you can watch and listen to this video means that you have a lot to be grateful for. Now, focus is power because you get in life whatever you focus on. So if you focused on just that, I promise you it'll make a radical shift in your emotions, in the way you think, and as a result of that, how you live your day. Remember, how you start your day when your morning is how you live your day. How you take that out throughout your day is to adapt an attitude of gratitude, and it will change everything around you. Perception is projection. The more you find the more you find things that you can be grateful for, the more you will find that you have things to be grateful for. The third one is to be mindful. Now, being a mind, be, be mindful or practice mind, what? Mindful. Uh, practice mindfulness, be mindful. This is about being present. I'm not saying go stand on top of a mountain and try to, you know, harvest pink rock salt while taking breaks and meditating with monks. It's, uh, it, it just doesn't work like that. Meditation is being still. Meditation is being quiet. Now remember what I said before is I'm not perfect. But what I know is I know strategies for changing my state. So if I'm ever not feeling mindful, if I'm ever feeling anxious, overwhelmed, stressed, I know it's because I'm not doing that. If I ever feel like I'm in a crappy mood and I'm I, a life is on top of me, it's because I'm not practicing that. And if I wake up in the morning feeling sluggish and like I'm going to have a crappy day, I know it's because I haven't won my morning. I haven't drank loads of water. I haven't put myself in a state that allows me to not only win my morning, but to win my day. So how can you practice mindfulness? You know, to do the meditations, to take time out to breathe, sit at your desk, sit at home, take 10 deep breaths, get outside into nature. As I said, that's what I did this morning. So I've already ticked those three off massively today. Number four is the big one. Move every single day. If you don't move it, if you don't lose it, no, if you don't use it, you lose it. It is that simple. Nothing comes, or a fitness or a fit body and a lean body does not come as a coincidence, does not come uh, by accident or it is on purpose. Live your life on purpose. Use what you've been given and appreciate it by taking care of yourself. If you're not moving every day, regardless of what your body looks like right now, if you are not moving every day, you are not grateful for the life that you have because you are sabotaging your own life. And if you have a family, you're sabotaging your family's lives because that might not make a difference today. But 20 minutes a day will give you 20 extra years of your life. And I'm sure 
that sounds like a good plan. So it's not about doing two, three, four hours or don't look at what I'm doing on my rituals. Do what works best for you. Do whatever you can to move every day, but just move. It's incredibly important. If ever I hear my clients say, oh, I haven't exercised over the last few days, I think, why would you choose to end your life early? I know it's extreme, but I know that if I'm not taking care of myself, if I'm not growing, I'm dying. It's that simple. So please make sure that you're growing every single day. Something, it could be jumping for 10 minutes, just jumping. It could be going for a brisk walk and doing interval runs, swimming, yoga, whatever it is, just move. The next one is to alkalize. I always joke and I say that this is a fancy word for go green. Make sure that your food is alkalized, alkaline foods as opposed to acidic foods. Less protein or less just protein, less sugary drinks, all that that are creating acid in your body, more live, natural, green, if you can, organic foods. 80% of your diet, as a reminder, should be green plants. A green smoothie, green vegetables with your food. If you look at your plate, if that's the size of your plate, the palm should be protein and the rest should be all green vegetables. Ideally green vegetables, but vegetables in general. So make sure that you you have an alkaline diet and therefore by having an alkaline diet, you're not acidic, Your body and your mind is not in a state of dis-ease. You're in a state of energy. You're in a state of vitality and you are in a state of natural health. But the choice is yours. Remember, you are what you eat. ROI, not a return on investment, return on ingestion. You are what you eat. Every single thing that you consume has a direct effect on your body and your mind. So please, every time you eat, make sure that you ask yourself, am I alkaline or am I acidic? And then do make your food choices based on that. So if I've had all green vegetables all day and it comes to an evening dinner and I know I've had loads of vegetables, I'm not going to give myself a hard time about what I eat. I might have fish and chips, whatever, depending on what I've done that day or the last few days, but make sure that you are alkaline. Make sure you're always tipped on the alkaline side of the pH scale rather than on the acidic side. And you don't need a a pH testing strip, you can feel it in your body. You can ask yourself, am I acidic or am I alkaline? Am I energized? The next one is to fuel for peak performance. So this is not so much to do with what you eat. I hope I'm spelling all of this right. Doesn't matter if I haven't because you're already clients of mine or you have been. Fuel for peak, fuel yourself for peak performance. I want you to think of a steam train. The steam trains run incredibly fast. How do they chuck fuel or um, coal into the fire? Constantly all day. And every time they chuck in uh, fuel, the, the steam train will increase speed because there's more fuel to burn. There's more fuel to fire up the furnace. Think of yourself the same. I eat eight times a day. I'm doing something right. But the people that I've always had the difficult times with when it comes to clients is the the people that refuse to eat more than one or two meals a day because they think, oh, I should eat less. No, you should eat less quantity, but you should eat more in terms of frequency. Every single time you eat, your metabolism fires up. It has to, so you can burn off that energy that you've just consumed. So by eating little amounts, healthy, a little bit of protein, mostly vegetables or nuts and seeds, it's that simple. Eating natural food in its natural form, nothing in a packet, you're just going to make sure that you're firing up your metabolism all the way throughout the day. Start with five meals. I say meals, five snacks, breakfast, mid-morning, lunch, mid-afternoon, dinner. It's that simple. Every two or two and a half to three hours, you consume something and therefore you are raising your metabolism. And what you will do is over time, you will help your metabolism increase, which is your natural, not synthetic or not fake. It's your natural ability to burn unwanted body fat. And it will only happen through one exercise, ideally interval training or high intensity interval training. And number two, through fueling frequently, uh, oft, frequently, often, and making sure that you're having smaller, healthier meals. 
Eat breakfast within one hour of waking up so that you can get the metabolism started. Do not wait. If you're waking up at five or six or seven, do not wait until 10 o'clock to eat because you are losing optimum energy time, uh, optimized energy time. You're losing time to burn natural body fat and you're really missing out. If you eat three hours after you wake up, you take that over seven days, 21 hours, you've lost a day. You've lost a day in which you could have naturally been burning your excess energy stores. Uh, and then the last thing, remember, food is fuel. Food is fuel, food is fuel, food is fuel. Do not eat late at night. If you're a bodybuilder or anything, which I know you're not, um, then it's a whole nother story, right? Because in the evening, you need to be taking in proteins and carbs so you can be building muscle throughout the night. But you want to make sure if food is fuel and it cannot be used when you're sleeping because your metabolism shuts down just after you go to sleep, if it is not burnt off, it will get stored. Not maybe, it will get stored. So every single time you eat and you have a late meal, you are storing fat in your adipose tissue all around here. So if you're still struggling with that belly, it's your, it's your meal. You're not eating often enough, you're not snacking throughout the day, you're not eating healthy food, and you're eating too late at night. You can pay all the money in the world for coaches and trainers and have the best exercise regime. But if you eat dinner and go straight to bed, you are never going to get that body that you want, especially if you're eating unhealthy food. Uh, number seven, cut out the poison. Now, two forms of poison here. You've got dairy. Is that right? Yes. And sugar. Now, Sugar in there, there's lactose. The main poison here is refined. Refined white sugar. That is the main poison. Eliminate it from your diet. It's not going to serve you in any way whatsoever. Yes, if you're a triathlete, some of you are watching this, clients of mine are triathletes, Ironmen, sugar has its place in sports. Sugar has its place when it comes, has its place when it comes to sports performance because it's instant glucose. Right? You, you need that energy. Uh, and some people now they're doing tests on saying that you can do it purely on fat or carbs or whatever, but you need sugar for instant energy. So if you're ever feeling faint or anything, sugar is always a good idea. But here's the problem with sugar is our daily allowance should be about 25 grams. And today the average person has 500 grams of sugar a day. And what this is doing is it's putting you, not alkaline, it's putting you in a state of, of acid. And when you are in an acidic state, you are in a dis-ease state, meaning not ease, non-ease. And that is where things like cancer and other diseases come from. So sugar is a ma massive, massive culprit when it comes to disease and when it comes to things like cancer and even depression and lethargia and uh, procrastination. I mean, there's all different levels of kind of diseases and discomforts, but sugar is, is a poison. Sugar is a poison. Now, on the ninth principle, I talk about living a balanced life. It's not, you don't have to be militant about this. As I said, if you're doing good things most of the time, then you can have the odd cheat meal or cheat day. Uh, it's che uh, two cheat days a week in my case. On the weekend, I like to eat whatever I want. But cut down your sugar massively. Here's, here's the main reason why. It's because not only does it have no nutrients, but it is actually for, it to be, for sugar, refined sugar to be metabolized and, and taken through your body, it must take nutrients from your body. So if you are running at a five out of 10 state and you think, oh, I need a sugar hit throughout my day or in the afternoon, you then consume sugar and then you think, oh, I'm going to be a six or a seven out of 10. Then you are, but then once the sugar has gone through your body, it has removed nutrients from your body in order to be processed, you're now going to be a four or even a three out of 10. What happens when you feel that way? You go back to do the same thing, you add more sugar, you feel even worse, and then by the time you get home, you feel so tired, you think, I must eat lots of food. And then you go and do what you're not meant to do, which is fuel your body at night. And you eat loads of food and you go cupboard, cupboard creeping or cupboard hunting. So cut the sugar. If you're going to have sugar, have natural sugars. Have natural uh, fructose from your fruits in the morning, but keep it to early on in the day because food is fuel. So just make sure that you're able to burn it off by the end of your day. 
The eighth principle is to, I'm running out of space now, elim, eliminate toxins. Let's go over here. The toxins are drugs, alcohol, uh, uh, nicotine, and the most important one, stress. I say most important because you all know that the top three are toxic for you. You don't need me to explain that, but stress will kill you. Being stressed out won't allow you to win your morning. It won't give you an attitude of gratitude. You will not be present. You'll be anxious, depressed, overwhelmed, fearful. You will not make good, healthy rituals when it comes to moving your body because you're stressed and you think, I don't have time to move. You'll reach for the sugar. All this diet stuff here will be sabotaged if you're stressed. So do what you can to minimize your stress. Yoga, stretch, Pilates, uh, meditation, go for a walk. Yeah, if you're at work, step outside. If, even, if you can do this, take your shoes off when you get to a park and just connect with nature. Calm yourself, read a book, listen to an audio book, listen to some music. But stress is a choice. I could not give you a cup right now or a bowl or a bucket and ask you to fill it with stress because stress is created from the inside out and then it manifests from the inside out. So manage your stress, limit your stress. There's two types of stress, you stress and de-stress. You need, to, you need to get rid of the distress, the bad stress. You stress is being excited and nervous and all those things are, are good. But the stress that's not making you feel good, manage it. Exercise, exercise, exercise. Exercise in body and exercise in mind. Mind being uh, focus on gratitude, uh, write down your goals, get out your frustrations on paper, do journal writing, focus on gratitude, exercise in body, stretch, yoga, move, breathe, all those things. Everything to do with your physiology. You just got to use it. The ninth principle is to live, I'm running out of space here, is to live balanced. Okay, live balanced. Number one, we are a part of nature. Tony Robbins, my mentor, always says that we live in a box. We live a box life. We live in a box, talk on a box, travel in a box, work on a box, work on a bigger box, type on a box, fly in a box. We live in a box life. We are a part of nature. I know you agree. And therefore, therefore for that reason, we must connect with nature wherever we can. Get outside. Get out of the box life and into life itself because that's where... In, in nature, everything is perfect. Unless us humans have messed it up, everything is perfect in nature. When I say perfect, I mean in grace and ease. Even watching animals, I've been on plenty of safaris, you watch an animal hunt going on or a lion attacking, attacking a gazelle or whatever. It's, it's all just natural. It all just flows. It's all very graceful. There is no stress and overwhelm and there's no beating ourselves up with, you know, the gazelle doesn't go, oh, if it gets away, oh, why did I get, well, why was I not fast enough? Why did I not take another route? No, live a balanced life. Realize that one, we are part of nature. Two, failure is a part of life. In every failure, there is a lesson to be learned. Uh, and I have learned many, 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 many lessons in my life. And it's because of my failures, I'm able to teach what I know today. Only because of that. Well, not only because of that, obviously because of my self-education. Uh, but a lot of my failures have taught me what to do and what not to do. And therefore, as a result of that, what I can share to help people uh, do the same things in their life, what I've done with my life. And, and don't give yourself a hard time for not exercising don't give yourself a hard time for having a bad day on your diet. Just get back on it the next day. When I say get back on it, I mean look at the 10 principles. What am I doing? Here, here's the thing. This is the truth. If you are having a bad day, by the end of your day, if you're still feeling bad, it's simply because you have chosen to feel bad. That might sound harsh, but it is the truth. It is the truth. Because if you even did half of these things... As soon as you were consciously aware that you weren't feeling good or you were not happy with the outcome of your day or how it was going, all you have to do is check in with this list. And if you just take a few minutes to breathe and be present, write down 10 things you're grateful for. Maybe your morning's finished, but you can move and go grab a green smoothie somewhere. Make sure that you go eat lots of, go eat a nice healthy salad. I'll even stop there. But just by doing that, you will automatically increase your mental, emotional, and physical state and allow yourself to feel better. And as a result of that, you, your whole day will change. Remember, think, feel, act, and achieve. The 10th principle 
and the most important one is to continue growing. Make sure that every single day we're all working as a client of mine, whether you are a client right now, whether you have been, we've all worked and continue to work on goals, achieving things that we want to in our life, not just for us, but for our family, for our companies, for our businesses, for the people around us, for, uh, for the world, right? If you're, to, if you're talking about contribution goals and charity goals and philanthropy goals, but we must keep growing every single day. And that doesn't mean to achieve the big things. It means to achieve something. Progress equals happiness. So if you're looking to run a half marathon, just one, run 100 meters today. But if you don't run anything today or tomorrow, you're never going to feel like you're growing. You're going to feel overwhelmed, stressed, fearful, uh, in a state of lack and scarcity because you're not growing. And if you're not growing, you are dying. Look back, I'll use the, the nature example again. Remember, we are a part of nature. Yes, we are superior beings, right, humans. We rule this earth. Hopefully, we're not going to destroy this earth. But we are a part of nature. And if you look around in nature, if you step outside, you realize that either nature, whether it's a plant or an animal, is either growing or dying. So what are you choosing to do every day? Make sure that you are investing in your coaching. Make sure that the things you're being sent, you're listening to, watching, reading. Make sure that you continuously have a coach or go to a seminar or listen to audio books or read books. Reading is a big thing for me because we have, the, we have literally a world of knowledge. The greatest minds in the world we have access to through books, whether it's a physical book or an audio book. But I always read every single day. And by you reading, choose to... Choose to read something that allows you to keep elevating the quality of your life and the people in, yours li in your life, but read every day. Go to seminars, read books, and step outside and keep growing. Growth is about spiritual growth, physical growth, emotional growth, psychological growth. As long as you keep growing, as long as you keep making progress in your life, regardless of what the destination is, you will always be happy. And that is my definition of happiness. It's being very happy with where you're heading in your life, but also very happy with where you are today and the person you are. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, there's a reminder for you to always do these 10 things. Do what you can to take, tick these 10 things off every day. You don't have to get them ticked off every day, but you want to build muscle. Like training, you want to build the muscle. Build the muscle. The longer you do it, the more natural it will become. And I do these. I don't have to look at this list. I know this lifts off by heart. I know it like the back of my hand. And I know that if I'm ever not feeling good, just check in with these peak performance principles because being a peak performer is not, it's not something that happens by chance. It's something that happens on, on purpose. So live your life on purpose. I look forward to seeing you in session.